Hey, this is Mark Lack, and you're listening to the Dynamic Lifestyle Podcast with my guys, Chris and Eric. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Dynamic Lifestyle Podcast. We have the one and only Mark Lack here. Mark, how you doing? Doing good, brother. We're chilling in the movie room right now. Get the boys over. <laughs> man, we're chilling in the movie room. I mean, um, this place is amazing. You know, and first Thank and you. foremost, man, thanks for uh, letting us come to your crib, of course, and do this interview. Uh, this is awesome. I know we were thinking about doing it outside, but the noise might have been kind of just like in the, the way. Yeah, exactly. I was. <laughs> I, I wanted to do it so bad. So, this is a beautiful house, by the way. Thank you. So, congrats on all that, all thanks. the success. Um, how did it feel, man, when you got the keys to this place? It was great. It was it was really funny. Um, so my soon to be wife Jenna and I, mm -hmm. when we were looking at houses, we looked at hundreds of houses, and when we came into this one, we remember the lady who was like selling it because it's a million dollar plus home. And so yeah. the lady in, in Orange County, California, so the lady was like looking us up and down, wearing like sandals and board shorts and like <laughs> a tank top and a hat, and she's like, "Oh, so are you guys looking for your parents?" And I'm like, "No, actually, I'm looking." And she just like kind of like snuffed me, and I was like, yeah. "You'll see." You know, and so then we, we just love this house out of all the houses we saw. So we were like, oh, we're going to we're going to buy this house. Um, and then so when we were buying it, we were like coming and visiting and like mm -hmm. it was locked up and we we're like looking at the windows and people probably thought we were like creeping on. This house. <laughs> but I was like, no, I'm like, I just bought this house. I'm just waiting to move in. It was so cool, bro. Um, especially when that lady finally was like. Oh my gosh, you really did buy it. I was yeah. like, that's right, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, then you mentioned too, like, it's like an older demographic over here, like, just like 50s, like 60s. 50, so, yeah, so they probably see you guys coming in. They're like, what the heck's going on here? But the funny thing is, is our, um, our neighbors on this side came over to the house, mm -hmm. and they were, when we opened the door, they're like, hi, we're your neighbors. You know, are your parents home? And we were like, no, actually, we just bought the house. Yeah. And then they kind of laughed, but they saw my face was straight. Yeah. And they were like, Oh, you bought it. How, how young are you? Uh, and then we found out we're like the age of their kids. Yeah. So just crazy, bro, how things work out. But, yeah. uh, and, you know, enough about that. I mean, the, the reason why I have this is what's more important for the audience. And it's really just because I surround myself with people yeah. who inspire me to be better. Exactly. And then I find great mentors who have achieved a result that I want. And I think the problem is the way that we educate ourselves is in the school system. Mm -hmm. Like if I said, how do we get educated? Most people would say school. school. And the problem I have with that is, is that school doesn't teach you enough things to be happy, fulfilled, healthy, and truly understand finances, accounting, and wealth creation. And so, you know, at a young age, I was lucky enough to have that light switch sparked in my head. Right. All this habit. I, you know, it's not that they got lucky. It's not that, it's not that, it's not that. It's all of us have it. We all have the ability to do, achieve sure. anything we want. And I'm just lucky that I had the light switch turned on in my head yep. at all, but very lucky that it happened at a young age. And yeah, so we're going to dive into some good chat. Yeah. So yeah. Just, <laughs> just to hit on your point too, it's a true testament to hard work and just being consistent, yeah. being resilient and never just never quitting on your dream and your goals and your vision, man. So, I mean, I'm super proud of you. I know we've known mm -hmm. each other for yeah. like the last three, four years. Yeah. You're considered um, our mentor. We did a coaching day with you and you changed our way of thinking and... We've accelerated our learning curve, our business ever since. So, man, yeah. I mean, nothing but just we're gratitude. All, we're all works in progress. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's what I want everybody to know is just like, I'm always a work in progress. Uh, not everything in my life is always great. Right. You guys know I got sick and almost died right. uh, last year. And it's like, you just never know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I tell people, you just need to enjoy the process and the journey. I yeah. think a lot of the times we get caught up on like, I want the house, I want the car, mm -hmm. I want this, I want this. And, and, and that's nice, right? You know, the destination, the achievements, the goals, those are nice. But I find out sometimes people get too attached to that. Yeah. They get too attached to the outcome and they don't fall in love with the process. process. Exactly. And that's how I look at it. I mean, if I lost my house, if I lost anything, you know, I could get it back. Yep. because I love the process and so that's what I think is really important for people to understand is like I'm always a work in progress mm -hmm. and I love the journey and the process of who I'm becoming because at the end of the day that's what I get to take home with me yeah. and that's what I get to like leave when I die with is like my memories and who I became and the impact I had not the house and the cars and right. those things yeah. those are just extra bonuses those are all sure. that's icing on the cake <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly and i know um you know you're you've been really busy as of late and you got a big event coming up yep. um, and i have no no doubt it's going to be awesome so tell us a little bit about this event that's taking place soon so if anybody wants you guys are welcome to uh to join but the event is something that it's our first big event i've been on the board of other events and put together some pretty big ones but this one's all on us and my team. So now it's not me with other people and we get to like split up the, the work. 
this one's all on us. So it's exciting. Uh, it's a lot of work. About 200 people are going to be there. And it's basically going to be 10 to 12 just rock star entrepreneurs who together, all of us are in our 20s and 30s. There's not one speaker who's older than their 30s. And we've all generated, cumulatively, we added it up, over $600 million. And we're all in our 20s and 30s. And there's people who you know are billionaires and all that stuff. Yeah. That's cool. What I found, and I've got my own TV show, uh, Business Rockstars, where I interview successful mm -hmm. people, and some of them are billionaires sometimes. And what I found, crazy enough, is the billionaires usually give the worst advice. <laughs> and, and that's no disrespect to them. They're giving great advice to billionaires and people who are very, 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 very financially wealthy. They're not giving good advice for people like maybe us who are right. getting started, who are in the journey of making six figures and seven figures. They're so far removed from even remembering what it was like to try to make their first hundred grand or try to make their first mm -hmm. million or try to get to a five million, ten million dollar a year run rate. They, the advice they give you is so distanced from that. And so for people watching this who are maybe trying to get to their first hundred grand or they're trying to make their first million, this is the event for you. Okay, this is the event where people in their 20s and 30s are doing the most up-to-date, relevant shit on how to make money from a laptop and a cell phone. Look, the $600 million I'm talking about was made from a laptop and a cell phone. So it's not that you need a bunch of employees and you need all this inventory and you need a brick and mortar location, mm -hmm. none of that. This is all people working from the comfort of anywhere in the world with a laptop and a cell phone and have generated $600 million in sales and they're all multi-millionaire net worth individuals. Mm -hmm. And so if that excites you and you wanna learn from people that are in your peer group, right? You wouldn't know if you were drinking a beer with this guy at the <laughs> restaurant or at the movies with this person or wherever, running into him at an event, you wouldn't be able to tell. I mean, I'm over here chilling in a t-shirt and <laughs> Nike running pants. Like, you know what I mean? You yeah. wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Right. Um, Cause none of them are trying to flex or stunt on you. They're just trying to teach you. Hey, yeah. look, I'm just like you. Only difference is I learned a couple different things. You might have learned how to get really good at basketball, but you might not be a professional. Mm -hmm. These guys learned how to get really good at using social media and the internet to make money. Right. Sometimes we use social media and the internet as consumers. We like to consume content, search stuff on YouTube, watch music videos, go on social media. Yeah, we might post stuff, but we're not doing it with the intention of making money exactly. or making a difference. Right. And there's no big picture. Oh, if I do this and this and this, it leads to money, it leads to impact, it leads to me building a personal brand. We're just kind of doing it. And we really catch ourselves on the consumer side. We're right. consuming content. You don't make money consuming. No, right. You make money creating value, creating exactly. opportunities, creating courses, creating products, and creating value. And so that's all it is. At the event, you're going to hear from about a dozen people who are in their 20s and 30s, who've made millions of dollars, who not only make money, but they make a big difference in the world. Yeah. And that's another thing that I care about, is not just making money, that's cool. But I like hanging out with people who make money, and then they make it matter, like exactly. Cole Hatter talks yeah, about exactly. Thrive. Yeah. How do I make money and then make a difference with my money? Because that's where fulfillment comes from. Exactly. You can make money, you can buy things, and fulfillment might be short-term, but long-term fulfillment comes from making a difference. So if this resonates for people listening and you guys want to know, how do I make my first hundred grand or million or couple million, and then how do I use that to live a great life but also make a difference? That's it, man. That's what we're doing. We're laying it out. You're not going to hear just from me because I've done it in my own way. You're going to hear from a dozen people who've all done it in different ways. But the one common factor is they all figured out how to use the same shit whoever's listening to this already has. Yeah. A laptop and a cell phone and the yeah. internet. Yeah. <laughs> they just know how to make millions with it. Exactly. Awesome, man. And we've been to your workshops, yeah. you know, like firsthand. So we know the quality, you know, that you deliver at the workshops, the content, yeah. the speakers, all that stuff. So I can only imagine this is like the workshop on steroids. So yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> so I want to circle back to just personal branding and like adding value because what people don't know is we actually interviewed you two years ago me and eric went back this past week and listened to it and it was like nice. holy shit dude we were laughing because like we were just the interview questions all the style right. all of it was all the sky style, right so it was funny just well, to see i want to jump in real fast remember what you're going to ask for people listening they might see us today and we'll look back two years from now yeah and laugh mm -hmm. not from a place of like oh wow i was so bad but like look how much i've grown yeah. exactly and that's the difference right i think most people stop and they don't start because they're afraid that they're already looking back mm -hmm. they're already looking back on day one and saying look how bad it was mm -hmm. look how bad it was i can't keep going i'm not good and we were not as good as we are today and two years from now we won't be as good as we will be in the future right. and that should always happen and i think the problem that holds most people back is they're not good today look i'm not the best at football or basketball or soccer if i wanted to be i could the difference is most people don't get started because they're not good and they look right. at people like us and they might be like oh those guys are pretty good those guys are really good and it's like 
we weren't always good. Yeah, right? exactly. And you got to get started. Yeah. You're always going to get better. Yeah. The problem is most people stop because they're just not good yeah. today. It took a lot of repetition. A lot of repetition. 100%. You guys know I've done over 1,600 yeah. interviews. Yeah. It's just like thousands of hours on camera and, and filming. It takes practice. Yeah, absolutely. It does. Yeah. So something that you are an expert at is personal branding. Okay. So I, I want to talk about just what have you seen the past two years, something that really sticks out as far as like how personal branding is uh, evolving and how important it is going forward. Like even in 2019, what do you see like personal branding, why it's so important just to keep working on your personal brand, uh, uh, brand just like put that at the forefront. The crazy thing is about two years ago when we did this last, personal branding was something that wasn't as popular now. Right. I think most people like my grandma wouldn't have known the word personal branding or influencer marketing or thought leadership two years ago in 2017. But now in 2019, it's pretty popular. Oh, yeah. I mean, college kids are building their personal brand to increase the you know, resume they have. College kids are shaping up their social media, which we can call your personal brand, how people perceive you, how people, what happens when I look you up on the internet and when I, whatever I find, I'm gonna make judgments and perceptions about you. Right. So if there's only that picture of you doing a keg stand, you know what I mean, beer <laughs> bong, um, cause from college, cause that's all you ever had on social media, cause maybe you're you know, still in your 20s or 30s, it's like that's not gonna be a good look. Now you could be so much more than that, but if that's all I see when I search you, that's the only perception I have, the only reference point and variable that I get to attach to your name and face. So personal branding is really just making sure that not only do I control the perception people have of me, but I make sure that I get all the right people to see me in that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's not about being famous or being a celebrity. That's cool, right? That's nice. And there's pros and cons that come with that. But I think personal branding in a nutshell is how do I get the right people to know who I am and then control that perception, not in a fake way, but because I have to force myself to become a better person. That's what I love most about personal branding. It's if I'm going to be a great father for my future child, then I have to have a vision for the father I want to be, read books on what makes a great father, get mm -hmm. educated, maybe even have role models and mentors, maybe even go to classes, right. and really have an idea of what does it look like to become the best father, the best husband, the best entrepreneur, the best fill in the blank. And then I go out and I get education around that. And so if you want to know how do I build a personal brand, how do I control perception, the first thing is, is how do you want to be perceived? Who do you have to become so that people want to pay you to show up and speak, so that people want to partner with you, so that people want to interview you or let you interview them? So it's all of those questions come with it. How do I want to be perceived so that I can be the person people would pay money for consulting, so I can be the person who people look at as the top drop shipping or e-commerce guy mm -hmm. or the best dentist or the best chiropractor? Or how do I need to perceive, how do I need to position myself so people perceive me as the top mortgage broker in Orange County? or San Diego? How do I position myself to have people perceive us as the best mom and pop pizza store in San Diego? You can do it for anything. And I told you guys, we've done it for so many different people now in a hundred different industries. And so personal branding is controlling the perception and then figuring out what you need to do so that the perception is authentic, mm -hmm. so that you're not fake perception, but you're real. Who people see you as is real. Right. That's why for me, a lot of the times now, I'm just like, I'm being myself. This weekend I spoke on stage. I chose to dress up nice for that um, out of respect. You guys came over to the house. This is an interview. I'm like, I'm chilling. Mm -hmm. This is the same outfit I'm going to wear when you guys leave. I'm going to get work done. <laughs> and so personal brand, that's simple. And we can go into the detailed stuff, like the, the crazy psychology behind why personal branding works, the science and the research behind why it works and why billionaires and celebrities and entertainers and athletes and entrepreneurs are all leveraging their personal brands, but why they're not talking about it. Right, right. And that's where I come in because most people are doing it and they're benefiting from it for their charities. They're benefiting from it for financially, for their families, for whatever the purpose is that you're, there's so many ways to leverage personal brand, but no one's really talking about it. And I started to study it because it really caught my attention and I, and I got into the online industry and I was like, oh my gosh, what's the common factor? Well, there's the boys and girls club, you know? Welcome to the boys club, and it's all the multimillionaire guys that are badass, they have all the following, they have all the shows, they have all the connections, they speak at all the events. I was like, man, how do I get that? And I started to learn, and I was like, man, they're doing different things, they have different businesses, they sell different products. What's the one common factor? It was their personal brand. Yes, it could be their psychology and the way they think and their habits, but from a surface level, like what is the thing? It was their personal brand. They all got really great positioning in their marketplace. People perceive them as an expert and as a real great person. 
who knows their stuff and they're the most known in their industry or one of the most known. And I was like, man, that's something I'm gonna learn how to do because yeah. I started to see the benefits. Yeah. So we can get into the psychology and all this stuff. Yeah, so you would say it's only gonna get bigger and bigger, just the personal brain, it's definitely, more important, right? To, in, in a sentence, the reason why it's gonna keep getting bigger is because from 2010, there was less than a billion people on social media. And now it's 2019, there's almost three billion people. So in less than mm -hmm. a decade, two billion people additionally got on social media yeah. and they're projecting in the next decade another two billion sure. so basically there's three billion people on social media right now we'll just say that the earth's population is eight billion roughly three billion are on social media they say there's five billion in the next 10 years so is it growing by about two billion or by about one billion people every five years yeah. which is about 200 million people a year are getting on social and so, yes, there's a huge opportunity. I'm calling it the modern day gold rush because instead of people mining gold, they're mining attention. And if you can learn how to acquire lots of gold back in the day, you'd make money. The gold rush. Today, the gold rush is attention. If you can learn how to mine attention, not mine bitcoins, right? Mine attention. <laughs> You can get followers, you can get attention, you can spend money on social media to run advertising and sell products, services, or anything. If you can learn how to craft that skill of getting attention, attention's a commodity. Think about this. Why do people pay $5 million for a 10 second Super Bowl commercial? Because a billion people are watching. Yeah. They have the attention of a billion people. It's the same commercial, but the commercial, just to put it on the Super Bowl for the to run the slot, within that four five million dollars, yeah, that, for just ten seconds. Mm -hmm. How is that possible? Well, because the whole world's watching, yeah, essentially, right. one billion people, and so, yeah, it's going to keep getting bigger, and there's a huge opportunity here. I think in five to ten years, we're going to look back and we're going to say, "Holy shit, I missed out on the gold rush," yeah. because right now you can get people to watch your videos on instagram facebook youtube linkedin google you can do it on all different types of criteria search interest income blah 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 um and i can do it for about a couple pennies so for a couple pennies i can put anything in front of anyone at the right time based on search criteria behavior criteria location demographic age income job title i can target anyone virtually at any time anywhere in the world 24 seven and the average person goes on social media over a dozen times a day. So I have over a dozen times to be in front of them and for a couple pennies. And so if you can learn what to put in front of them, how to do it in an effective way and then which platforms do it in the most efficient and cost effective way to acquire a customer so that you can be profitable so that you can do this at scale, then you're going to really start to make some money right, and start to see the value. Right, absolutely. So let's talk about that. Like, you know, getting that out there. So um, for me, I teach my clients to create what's called, you know, celebrity ba celebrity value based, you know, content, right? Yeah. I want you to create really good content that's intentional, valuable and shareable. Um, otherwise, it's like it's irrelevant, in my opinion, it really is. So how do we do that? How, what's your what's your take on that? First thing you got to do is you got to solve a problem. I think right. a lot of the times people nowadays, they're posting content about them. They're yeah. posting selfie photos that make them <laughs> look good, especially you guys being in the fitness space. You guys know this better than anyone. Oh, yeah. The fitness space, so many people have built million person followers. You know, I've got three million followers on my account. And it's just because they post selfies of themselves, mm -hmm. you know, looking good. And it's like, come on, that's not adding value to anybody. And the ironic part is, is a buddy of mine, Andy Frisella, who runs First Form, mm -hmm. they're doing like $400 million a year. They do supplements and different stuff. They're the largest influencer marketing uh, employee company in the world, basically. They, they, they enroll more influencer marketers in health space than any other right. person in the world. Like They have like a $100 million budget a year to pay influencers. And so what Andy says <clears throat> is, he basically said, I, I'm willing to pay a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars a month to somebody with fifty thousand followers that are hardcore, gnarly engaged. Meaning, I can look on their account and I can just see. And he goes, and then I do a small test and I say, promote one of our products for 30, 90 days, and we'll see how the results look. And if it's great, then I'll pay you fifty grand, a hundred grand, two hundred grand a month for somebody with fifty thousand followers. Yeah. <laughs> and he says, then there's people with three million followers. I'll only pay them twenty grand a month. <laughs> And he says the reason why is because the person with three million followers does nothing for their audience. They might look better than the person with 50,000 followers by their selfies that they upload, but the people who like, comment, and share, and whatever, and engage with that, they're not doing it because that person has influence over them with value. Right. And when you have influence with value, that's when you make money. So yeah. Gary Vaynerchuk has five million followers, but he does it by adding value that's entertaining and educating. And so people follow Gary because they get value. 
So when Gary sells something, he has a lot of influence. People buy it, even if it's shoes or wine or books or anything, people buy it because Gary adds value with entertaining and educating content and has millions of people that follow him. Somebody posts selfie videos with millions of followers, but they never once post any of any value. You know, their photos are them with a Gatorade bottle or a first form <laughs> thing, and they're not actually adding value. Mm -hmm. Where the person with 50,000 followers, all day they're going live on Instagram or Facebook, they're posting value, they're filming videos that are educational, they're doing book reviews, they're doing product reviews, they're really engaging and commenting back to every right. single person. They're not full of themselves. They don't try to make every photo look its best. In they're fact, they upload they're photos educated. that are not good and they say, look, I don't always look good. Here's yeah. the reality. That person is worth more money on social media. And so the first thing is you got to solve a problem. Right. I think there's this misconception that having followers matters. It doesn't mean you're going to get more money. If I just proved it. One of the guys with the largest influencer marketing budgets in the world literally said, I pay five, 10, 20 times more to a small follower than a big follower. Yeah. So you have 5 million followers and make less than somebody with 50,000 followers. It's all about engagement yeah. and do you have true influence? Yeah, and something yeah. I wanna ask you on that is like, I, I love that point because it's 100% it's spot on, but what, what would you say to the person that has like 10K or like 20K, but they just won't get that type of opportunity because they only have 10 or 20K, but they're literally workhorses, like nothing but value, value all day. Would you tell that person or advocate to that person, maybe even think about buying some followers to get that perception up of those numbers and get yourself that opportunity to then sit there and, and do value? So there's a lot of different ways that you can quote unquote buy followers. Mm -hmm. And so I think most people have this misconception. Most people brag that they have <coughs> organic growth. Most people go, mine's all organic. And I'm like, shut up. <laughs> I'm like, no one cares. Gary V's is not organic. Gary V pays hundreds of thousands of dollars for what we call shout outs and giveaways. And so they'll say, we're giving away an iPhone 10. Just tag three people in the comments and go follow these accounts. I pay for shout outs, I pay for giveaways, I pay for all the different ways to grow. So trust me, the reason why I have 100,000 followers is not because it was organic. Look, that's like saying, that's like all these stupid businesses that come to us begging for our help and they say, we struggle to get customers and I go why and they go because we just have word of mouth and we just grow organically the people who struggle the most in life and business and growing social media are people who just grow organically right, right? yes there's the one percent of companies the super rare you know uh, impossible to duplicate it's not a proven process and a roadmap for people to follow and they grew organically and became huge on social media with their business. That's just not a reality. That's not a process where if I said, can a hundred people follow it and all get the same results? That's a fucking recipe. If we all went in the, sand, in, in, the, uh, in the kitchen and made a fucking sandwich and there was a recipe and we had the exact same ingredients and the exact same blueprint, would we all make the same sandwich? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's a recipe. So, well, is there a recipe for social media growth? Hell yeah. yeah. And it's not organic growth. That's not, that's not duplicatable. Yeah. Organic growth is something that everyone should just fucking flush down the toilet. What you want to do is you want to figure out how are people growing, not organically, but doing it in a way that's with integrity. Right. Meaning I'm not going on, and everyone's made this mistake before because it sounds attractive and easy, buying, right? You can, you're, you're buying yeah. them with buying shout outs, and stuff. but you're not buying fake bots. Right. Um, you're paying someone else who's an influencer to shout you out on their account and say, go follow these guys. People watch it and it's their choice to go follow you. Right. And if they do, great. A lot of the times you have what's called a stick rate, meaning how many people stick. So an influencer or a giveaway is where you get the biggest drop off. So a giveaway might be like, get a free laptop, win a free car, and you get like 20,000 people to follow you. And then what's the stick rate? You're gonna get 4,000 people to drop off. So you might see my account might go up to 130,000 soon and then 5,000 drop off. That's not because Instagram removed robots that stopped following me. That's because I did a, sh I did a giveaway or a shout out and all of these people followed me and then the stick rate is right. they don't like my content. They didn't follow me for my content. They followed me to win an iPhone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's the distinction people don't understand. So my engagement will go spikes and then plateau and maybe drop. Spikes, plateau and drop. Yeah. And so. If you want to avoid that, you need to keep doing lots of shout outs and giveaways so it just keeps going up. Um, and then you can also use what's called the switch your Instagram account to a, a business yes. account. Mm -hmm. Hook it up to a Facebook page, plug in a credit card, and then you can promote and spend money because what's happening is Instagram's becoming like Facebook. Facebook was great, 
then it's not so great. People shift over to Instagram. Facebook owns Instagram. Instagram is the hotness. And then Instagram starts to become like the parent company, Facebook, mm -hmm. meaning it's a pay to play platform. It's not that much yet, but Facebook is only really good if you pay to play. Mm -hmm. You can have a 10 million follower Facebook page and have two comments on your post because Facebook wants you on your page where you get likes and followers, not friend requests. That's your profile. On your page, they want you to spend money to get your followers or anybody to see your stuff. And you guys know I've done funny stuff where mm -hmm. I've made a Facebook page or an Instagram page of a banana yeah. and mm -hmm. I got 100,000 views <laughs> on its first video in 24 hours. Because that's it. Anybody listening, you only have to just pay a dollar and people will start seeing your stuff. So if you say I only have 10,000, 20,000 followers, look, put your big boy pants on, spend some money getting people to see it. You can spend money on shout outs. You can spend money on giveaways. And you're gonna get a lot of people to follow you. Now they may not be who you want. They might be from Guatemala right, or right. you know like Australia or something. They're just random people following you. But here's the thing: there's these auditing websites where you can audit Gary Vaynerchuk's following, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock's following, whoever you want to follow. You know, Grant Cardone, Ty Lopez, Lewis House. You can audit their following, and you'll see that most people with over a million followers, it's a lot of averages. Most people with a million followers, they're gonna have 50% or more of their following random ass people from all over the right. world. Um, and so you just have to understand, with celebrity status, you get people to know you from all over the world. Okay. That's what being a celebrity is. You think you're gonna have a million people in San Diego know you? Get the fuck out of here. No, there's not even a million people nowhere. in San Diego. Yeah. So when people go organic, look, <laughs> yes, there's a fine balance between getting 10,000 people of the right people to know you and getting a million people to know you with 90% not the right people. But 100,000 are. And so the person who only has 10,000 of the right people, and I have a million people with only 100,000 right, 900,000 not right, I'm, my engagement's gnarly, my speaker fees are going up, I'm getting booked on all the stuff because people see me as a celebrity. Exactly. Now I may have 900,000 people that aren't my demographic, but they engage with my stuff, they may never buy from me, but they following and engaging with me increases my vanity perception that I'm bigger, not bigger than I am, but I'm big, bigger than you. And the person with 10,000 might make a lot of money, but the person with a million, if you do it right, remember this kind of contradicts what right. I said, oh, the mm -hmm. person with less followers makes more money. I know what the fuck I'm doing. So that's a big distinction. Most people don't know what they're doing mm -hmm. and that's why they need first form to pay them six figures. Yeah. I go make my own six figures a month selling my own shit because I know what I'm doing. And that's a big distinction here is a lot of people try to get big on social so that a company can pay them money. I'm not gonna be a company's little bitch. Not that they are. But I have my own I'm company that. that pays me. I, I write my own checks. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, there's a lot of ways to grow. At the end of the day, you have to have dope content that adds value, makes a difference, and you really need to go all in. I'd rather you do one amazing piece of content a week than three shitty pieces of content a day. Yeah. And that's a big distinction. A lot of people post nine times a day and they just repost other people's stuff, but you gotta drop like one or two dope ass pieces of content. Most guys post five times a day, even like Gary Vee, sometimes eight times a day. I post like once a day, but it's dope. Yeah, um, it's like you put actual thought into it and it's intentional. Exactly. Yeah. And so the first thing I recommend is, is map out on a sheet of paper, what is the different problems I'm gonna solve? Maybe go and find influencers who are already achieving a certain result that you want, and if you see content that you like, just copy it, but do it in your way. Do it in your version and figure out how you can finesse it. Because a lot of the times in the beginning, you're just being a copycat, which is mm -hmm. fine. A lot of the times people don't have their own original finesse. And that's fine, it's actually one of the best ways to start because you don't have anything that you understand how to start, so you need something to model. Yeah. When you learn to play music, you don't just wake up and go and start playing Led Zeppelin. <laughs> you fucking learn how to play the C chord, the D chord, and then you start to go through and you learn sheet music. You learn the basics. You're mm -hmm. copying what every other person learned. When you learn how to play basketball, you learn all the same moves. When you learn how to cook, you learn recipes, then you make your own Bobby Flay shit. Um, when you learn how to paint, you paint other paintings that everyone else has painted in class before, then you go out and paint your own shit. So in life, when we learn something, we all go and learn someone else's stuff first so we can copy it. Then we get good and we've learned enough of other people's stuff, we create our own. Tony Robbins yeah. said, when I got started, I copied everybody. And then I studied so many different people, I saw the correlation between everybody, that I said, I see what is now missing. Now I can create my own stuff. When I started, I copied everybody because I, I give them credit. I'm not saying you know copy, um, but I'm saying copy and reciprocate. Right. Like Tony Robbins says the six human needs are blah, 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 blah. I'm teaching, but it's Tony Robbins stuff and I'm giving credit. Yeah. Then you eventually go, oh, I know, what I'm, I know what I'm doing. Now I'm gonna create my own content. So it's basically rip off and duplicate. 
until you have the confidence and the awareness to see where those things you were copying were missing the ball yeah. so you can start to fill in the gaps. Yeah. And I would even say to add to that, just it's a huge experimentation. You know, everyone thinks that they're just black Test. and white answer and it's, it's there's so much gray area. And it's like, exactly. for example, I've been testing like headlines on pictures, very catchy captions. So yeah. I can catch that, that viewer's attention. All I have like one or two seconds through that big scroll that exactly. they're doing, you know? So it's like, do that on some videos, do it on a nice photo and just make some badass content and just, you exactly. know, give some value. And I was going to say too, man, holy shit. Like, holy shit. You see why we went to Mark's <laughs> workshops every freaking time? And can you imagine what he's going to drop at his conference? Holy shit. We're so, having man, a conversation right now. I got to give you a fist pump for that. Man. Yeah, that, that was fire. Like, that was gold right there. <laughs> All right, Mark. So let's, let's shift gears here and talk more about like your lifestyle and stuff too. So I remember from the past uh, interview that we talked about, you talked a lot about pattern interruption within your day-to-day -day, um, life. Yeah. And I, I caught that again when I listened to it and I was like, that's awesome. Yeah. So um, is there any key habits you've picked up like in the past two years that you can share with the audience that's just, you know, something that programs your mind to play offense, not defense on a day-to-day -day basis? So one of the things that I try to always do, I'm not perfect, I don't always do this, is just read. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll tell a quick story that ties into that. One of my one of my mentors, that uh, my first event I attended, he said, how many of you in the audience are willing to, if you could achieve anything in 10 years, any amount of money, any goal, how many of you would be willing to shovel elephant poop for one hour a day? And everybody's hand went up. Because they're like, in 10 years, just one hour a day shoveling poop, I can achieve, I can be a multimillionaire or whatever, Pfft, sign me up. <laughs> and uh, And then he said, just replace the shoveling of the elephant poop with reading a book on something that's going to help you achieve your goal and you'll do just that and it's funny because everybody was willing to shovel poop but they're not willing to read a book mm -hmm. and it's the idea that if it was guaranteed in 10 years that i could achieve my goal then i shovel poop mm -hmm. and the funny thing is is in life nothing's guaranteed but you can sway the odds in your favor dramatically by just doing the work and so you know what i did was i was about 18 when i heard that and i said wow what a great analogy. I'm 18. I totally, and I was flunking school. I was like, what a great analogy because I totally associate shoveling poop with reading a book. Mm -hmm. And so that really got to me. And it was funny at a business conference because everyone in the business event was like suits and ties and their hands were up too. And I was like, damn, I need to just read more books. Because at the time, I only associated reading to school, chemistry, history, blah, blah, blah. Right. And I was like, reading sucks. Um, and so I was like, I need to read books. Started searching on the internet, came across Tony Robbins and other people who inspired me, and they just gave me awareness. Look, they use words that your brain can understand, but they put their words in a certain order that connected with me. And that's this, that's crazy. Like a great story is just the words in the right order. Right. And so I was starting to understand the power of just reading the right words and how that could affect me and lay a blueprint out in my mind. Because we use words to describe our emotions Mm -hmm. And then our emotions dictate and influence how we feel, and how we feel influences our actions. And so I started learning the right words that would help me control my emotions so that I could then control my emotions, which would help me control my thoughts and my feelings and my behavior. And so most people don't have control over their words. They have small vocabulary, so they have small consciousness. If consciousness is an expansion of awareness and everything, but you have a small vocabulary, you can't think very big because you have small words. Mm -hmm. And so I started to study words to expand my consciousness and my awareness of what was possible through words because words dictate your emotions. There's this thing called spiral dynamics. It talks about human evolution of consciousness and how like Gandhi and Mother Teresa and people who were just self-servants, um, they just were there to serve other individuals. Right. They weren't even there to help themselves. They were just there to serve others. We're operating at <clears throat> the highest level because they knew that fulfillment in life was through helping others. And I think at the end of the day, the most successful and the happiest, not the most successful asshole, the most successful, happiest people I know. I know a lot of successful assholes. I know a lot of successful, extremely happy people that you'd meet them and you'd be like, I've never said this before. I would trade spots with you. <laughs> you know what I mean? You've met somebody and you go, I would trade spots mm -hmm. with your life. You're healthy, you're happy, you make a difference, people love you, your family loves you, right. you have amazing everything. Check, 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 check all the boxes, you win. How? I started asking myself that question and I started realizing it was through learning how to use the right words to start controlling their life and they found a way to make money through service. So they didn't make money by stepping on people's backs. They made money by helping people up. And so what I realized was there's another way. And 
the right words helps you become successful, but it also helps you become spiritually fulfilled and grounded. Yeah. And some people just learn the words of finance. Think about this. If you learn finance, is it or is it not words and numbers? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. It's words and numbers. Exactly. And so everything in life is words and numbers. If you said, I'm angry, you have to use words to tell me how you feel. You have to use words to describe the emotion. And so pain is a descriptive through words. So everything is. And so what's crazy is a lot of the times when we say, I'm mad. Today was okay. How was today? Not bad. And we use words that limit us. Right. And so what I've done is I start forcing myself to speak positive words. How was today? And if I said not bad, I'd be like, I'm sorry. It's amazing. Yeah. And I force myself to smile and say it. And it sounds stupid. It sounds semantical. It sounds small and insignificant. But it's the little things that matter. Because if you go to the gym hardcore for 30 days and then stop, are you healthy for the rest of your life? No. Yeah. But if you just go to the gym for 20 minutes a day, and just put in a little bit of effort, yep. but you go every day for the rest of your life, that's gonna make a big difference. Absolutely. Right? And I think most of the time in life, the little tiny things that we do every day actually end up making the biggest difference. Yeah, and I'm so, just, I just wanna interrupt you really quick. Yeah. I think it's huge, man, because I've been doing this too with like the words, and it's just like the same type of thing where, you're, where every day you could say, oh, I have to go do this thing. Exactly. Why, not, why not refrain and say, I get I to get go to do this. this. You know, the littlest like, thing. It's such a yeah. huge one, difference though. One one makes you feel trapped, yeah. and one gives you freedom and possibilities. Exactly. And one makes you feel blessed, and one makes you feel almost trapped. Yeah. I have to do this. Yeah. You don't have to do anything. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up, because that's a huge thing for me, is like, I'm in such flow right now in my life, and I'm blessed to be here. It's from a lot of hard work, and what I can't imagine is that it gets better from here. <laughs> that's what's nuts. I can't imagine it, but it's hard to imagine that like, it gets better than this? <clears throat> I talk about it all the time with my fiance Jenna. I'm always like, it gets better than this, because we're always just like blessed. Like we wake up, we go to our, oh, we wake up, we hang out with our puppy. I read books every morning to fill my mind mm -hmm. with knowledge, to help me achieve my goals, and I read what I need. That's a great little one. Read what you need. Mm -hmm. I used to just read everything because I was like, oh, Bill Gates said this was a good book, <laughs> okay. and I would read it, and I'd be like, the fuck am I reading this book for? <laughs> I'm like the first chapter in, and I'm like, what the hell is this? It's about company culture. It's just me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Now I have employees. But you get my point. Like no, back absolutely. in the day, I was like, oh, Warren Buffett said these are the top seven books. And I read them and they're on like policy for the government. And I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Maybe this is good in 10 years. Yeah. But right now I need to get motivated. Yeah. I need to know how to set goals and achieve them. I need to know blank, blank, blank. And so read what you need. Yeah. Don't read it because Gary Vaynerchuk recommended it. Read it because it's what you need. Yeah, so point. now I wake up and I read what I need. If it's motivation, I'll close the finance book or marketing book and I'll go up on my bookshelf or I'll go on Amazon and I'll buy a new motivation book mm -hmm. for whatever reason or I'll go on fucking YouTube and watch exactly. a free video of my boy Eric Thomas. Like, you know what I mean? There's never an excuse. So I read what I need and then we go to the gym. Today I went to the gym, we have a personal trainer because <clears throat> I started to let my health go on the back burner. As an entrepreneur, I was like, I'm busy making money. And I rationalized, I'm too busy making money to go to the gym, this is more important. And then I almost died um, and I was like, holy shit, health, that's a wake -up call. health is the most important yeah. thing. Um, and so I was like, that's it, I'm hiring a trainer. And especially after being sick, I was like, I lost 15, 20 pounds, I was like, fuck, I need to get back. And I was like, what's the best way to do it? The way that I tell people to do it if they want help with their personal brands, hire a coach. Hire a coach. Mm -hmm. um, the if, way if you want help with anything, who are the best people in the world? People with coaches. Yep. Companies that are super successful have boards of advisors, coaches, they hire consultants. The best athletes have coaches, consultants. And so I was like, I'm gonna hire a coach. So we had a gym trainer, a lot of our other entrepreneur friends use them too, down the street, really convenient. So long story short, right? It's like I do all the things in the morning and I know people might be like, I have a nine to five job. Well, first of all, that's the stage you're in now. Don't compare your chapter one to someone's chapter seven. Right. Um, and work towards it, make it a goal. Um, and you, you don't have to have a nine to five job. You chose to have a nine to five to. job based on your environment, your conditioning, your circumstances, your beliefs, your values, and your model of the world. That's what you think, and that's what you're doing it to be your best. Yeah. But if, you, if, this, if this interview inspires people, it's like start reading books that are gonna give you the freedom to not have to not have nine to five. See, the problem is most people have nine to fives because they've only read books that get them jobs. Right. They only read books that get them jobs. Hmm. I've read 500 plus books, more than that, on sales, on marketing, on all these different things, personal development, being my best self, mm -hmm. mindset, communication, confidence, 
all these things that are going to help me live life on my terms and make money on the internet. Because if you want to live life on your terms, a big one of those is getting away from the boss man, right? And then you become yeah. an entrepreneur, and then your boss man is the taxes. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to move to Puerto Rico. Four percent tax, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so something that you, that you mentioned, man, that caught my attention. You said that uh, you can only imagine how much better it's going to get, right? Which is an awesome place to be. And so something I always like to ask, you know, for somebody that's at your level, is what are you willing to sacrifice at a cost? And I always like giving the analogy of an NFL player. Their sacrifice is beating the shit out of their body every single week, right? To, to get paid, to have this platform to reach millions of people. So what are you willing to sacrifice at a cost to get where you need to get? It's a fantastic question. Uh, one of my mentors, John Astaroff, calls it the switch cost. There's always a cost for something. So most people are not willing to pay the switch cost of getting off their ass, watching Netflix, to go to the gym. Oh, I'm tired after work. Wake up fucking early. Right? Like there's always someone, and not just one, but there's always so many people that are so inspiring. I'm small inspiring. There's people that are massively inspiring because of the lives they live. I'm just somebody who's figured out a couple tricks to, ha to, to a fulfilling life and how to make money on the internet. But there's people that are like single moms with five children that don't have money, that wake up at 3 a.m., get in that gym workout, get back home at four, to start cooking all the food and lunches and help their kid with their homeworks and pack their bags and wake them up at individual and then drive them to school and drop them off and then go to a job and go to a second job and then go to a nighttime job and then get home at midnight, sleep for three hours, wake back up, go to the gym. Fucking A. <laughs> that person's inspiring, yeah, right? Yeah. And so I hate when people tell me these excuses. Oh, I sleep eight hours a day. I have my nine to five job. I come home. I'm tired. I don't have time to work out. Shut the fuck up. Seriously. You, Seriously. Only, you only work eight, nine, ten hours. Seriously. You got another 14. <laughs> You know what I mean? What you talking about? You busy. You too busy to, to go to the gym. You too busy to go. YouTube's free. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And so I think most people hold themselves back from the life they're capable of achieving. And so I'm trying to even remember like the point that you were asking, but it's like, I just, so many times I see people, they're their biggest enemy. Yeah, absolutely. They're the biggest thing holding themselves back. They're up in their head. They're still mad at their parents for something that happened when they were 10 years mm -hmm. old. Shit that's holding them back. The kid who bullied them, the teacher who didn't like right. them, that one thing that happened. Most people are just grown up children carrying the same baggage that affected them back then, but it's so deep in the back of their mind that it doesn't affect them at a conscious level like that they're even aware of, mm -hmm. but it's just who they are. Like I can meet people because I've done enough studying on psychology and therapy and stuff where I just I can meet somebody and I can be like, damn, you got some shit that happened as a kid yeah. and you haven't dealt with it. Yeah. And like they're like, how did you know? And I'm like, look at the way that you fucking show up as an adult. Right. Obviously something happened and you've been carrying it with you. Unless something just happened today and that's why you like this. It's like, it's pretty obvious, yeah. right? And you mm -hmm. know when you meet somebody, it's like, damn, you had some stuff happen. I'm sorry you haven't dealt with it yet. Mm -hmm. And you just say that to people and they're like, what? And they just yeah. melt away. And it's like, <laughs> So yeah, man, I mean, most people are their biggest enemies. Yeah. I, I have studied so many inspiring people that anytime something goes down in my life, I have perspective. And I think a lot of people in this weak, watered down society we live in, the social media society we live in, where everyone's looking at the perfect life mm -hmm. and able to poke fun at their own, everyone's fucked up, man. I know the most successful people, the most famous people, they're fucked up too. And not in a bad way, we just all have stuff yeah, that goes, we all, we all have our own stuff. Yeah. And there's seasons, sometimes it's winter, sometimes it's summer, sometimes it's fall and spring. We all have metaphorical seasons in our life. Sometimes it's not a good season. Sometimes it's the season that your family member died. That's a bad season. But it depends on your beliefs of passing into the next yeah. stage of consciousness. But you get my point. It's like Absolutely. seasons, bro. I don't remember what your question was to be exact. No, that was I, good though. <laughs> I just, so many times people are holding themselves back. Yeah, and for sure. example, man, I mean like we lost our father when we were 18 years old, 18 years old, you know, right before Christmas. And it's like not once, and our, and our mom turned to alcohol right after. It's like not once have we ever used that excuse to, to never like pursue guys. our dreams. So inspirational yeah. right there. It's like, you, man. It's like, you, you know, and it's like, again, we could have chose to go down a different uh, rabbit hole. Most we people didn't. would. Most people people would be doing drugs and alcohol exactly. still. Right? Absolutely. It's like, and I know people who had stuff like that happen. Then they turned to drugs and alcohol, their life was ruined, and then at 40, they popped back and yeah. became this amazing person, yeah. like a Grant Cardone or something, yeah. right? It's like, what? Yeah, it's crazy. There's never an excuse. Exactly. And I think most of the times, the problem is, 
the only story people have to tell themselves is the one that happened to them. Right. Instead of it happening for them, they, exactly. can't, even, they can't even fathom that this happened for me because their level of consciousness is still so small that this happened to me. God did this to yeah. me. Society did this to me. My parents did this to me. And so they're asking themselves the wrong questions. They're telling themselves the wrong story. And they haven't, get, they haven't given themselves the power of choice yeah. to choose the meaning that what happens to you is actually happening for you. Exactly. And what happens for you can be a blessing. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And so, dude, there's just so many little things. Yeah. Like, I could go on for days. I could that. pull in the personal <laughs> development. Because <laughs> I've studied so much and I've come to the conclusion that there's so much depth to life. There's there so is. much beauty to life. And even the bad things that happen are what make the good things beautiful. Yeah. If everything good, I know people that they have so much money that if you think money would make you happy, because there's a degree that money makes you happy, there's science behind that. As soon as you don't have to worry about paying for the bills and paying for the small stuff, you actually are happier. Because yeah. divorce, stress, anxiety, frustration, fighting in the family, a lot of it has to do with money, most yeah. of it does. And so there is science and research that shows once you make X amount of money, depending on the demographic of where you live, San Francisco, you need to make more versus here versus Wisconsin versus another country. Mm -hmm. But what money does buy happiness. There's science behind that, but only to a degree. Once you get too much money, then it flips. Then it does the opposite. Because now you have too much certainty. Tony Robbins, Six Human Needs, too much certainty. If I know I can have that person, I can have that thing, I can buy this, mm -hmm. do this, anytime I want. I know I can sleep in tomorrow. I know I can wake up and buy this, go here, buy, jump on the private jet, go to Paris, come back, go here for lunch, da 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 Everything becomes too predictable, you get bored. And the only way to change your state fast enough is to go to drugs and alcohol. Yeah. So you're like, well, I can buy that. That doesn't get me juiced anymore. I can contribute that. That may get me juiced if you're smart and understand contribution is the key to fulfillment. But et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's like you just turn to drugs and alcohol. Yeah. So it's like there, no matter what, dude, it's like right. people don't understand the mind. The power of the mind is the yeah. key. And so for people listening, it's like start studying more about your fucking brain. Your brain is everything. Your brain is like the software, right? It's like... Some people are still running on a fucking rotary phone software in their brain. It's like, it's 2019, guys. We got cell phones. We got smartphones now. You yeah. know what I mean? The software is different. Right. And we have access to information that shows our brains dictate our health, wellness, spiritual connection, fulfillment, happiness, mm -hmm. money, relationships. Mm -hmm. It's all in our brain. And I just think most people have never even read one book on how to start programming their brain. Yeah, and I think a lot, lot of that- 100 books. Yeah. Exactly, I think a lot of that comes down to just EQ, right? We're always taught that, oh, IQ, have the best IQ, blah, 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 yeah. but it's like we were never taught EQ and the importance of that and how to actually put that into action. And it's like, man, you better have some hell of like some sort of like emotional resiliency as an entrepreneur if you want to make it in this, in this society. I mean, have you to. have to. And it's like, we're always dealing with emotions every day, but it's like so many people just crack at one little thing of adversity, you know? and it's, life is tough. Yeah. Entrepreneurship is tough. And if you're going to go through life, and if you're going to go and also be an entrepreneur, you definitely need to have thick skin. Yeah. You definitely need to have emotional intelligence. You definitely need to create an environment that allows you to thrive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, like, you know, so many people talk about this if you study spiritual fulfillment and stuff like that. And I was just doing a, a, a call with my buddy Preston Smiles. He was talking about this, so I'll use it as an example because I love it. It's the environment that dictates the growth of the seed. Mm -hmm. And so you can plant a seed of a redwood that in a hundred years could grow hundreds of feet tall and 20 feet in width and just crazy, right? Like to fathom that a tree can get that big from a tiny seed is nuts. And so if you put that seed and you planted it in a tiny little pot, it's not going to grow that big because it can't. The environment of the pot dictates its growth. Gotcha. And I think a lot of the times the environments that people live in, if I go to your house and it's dirty, if I go to your house and you're not creating what you would consider a beautiful environment at a cost efficient level for your, you know, income. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I know people that they don't have a lot of money, but you go to their place and they've done a great job making it feel beautiful. They right. might have candles or flowers or good art or fake plants or real plants. And it just feels better exactly. than just shit all over the floor and yeah. trash and all oh, that. Oh, I have done this. And it's like the environment dictates how you're going to blossom and grow as a human. I love that. Just like it does in nature, yeah. we're in nature. We're yeah. in nature right yeah. now. So we, if, if I take somebody and I drop them into an environment where it's just terrible and there's just death and drugs and nothing good going on, that there's a slight chance that person could break through. 
but most likely not. And that's why I love stories of people who have come from that and still broke through, because that's just another reflection and example that there's never an excuse right. for anybody. And then if you study why those people changed, it's because they changed their story. They gave it, that happened for them so that they could create more impact in the world and show more people inspiration that anything's possible. Right. Um, but most people, most seeds, they let their environment dictate them. Yeah. Yeah. And Agreed. most people don't have the awareness that I can control my environment. Yeah. We bought this house, we didn't need to, we could have lived anywhere. We bought this house because you guys, the first thing you did when you came here, you were like, that view. Yeah. And I was like, yep. Yeah. I was like, I love it. That view was what helped sell the house. The house is beautiful, it's brand new, it's the model home. But that view gave me the feeling, and we'll go out there when we're done vibing, like you just stand out there, arms open, and like, you just, it's so open. There's no brick wall. Mm -hmm. There's nothing blocking. You walk out, it's flat, and there's the whole view, yeah. right? You cut B-roll in. Beautiful. Like, that's the environment I want to be in. And so, I just think most people don't understand. It's like, and your environment's everything. The books you read, the shows you watch, mm -hmm. the music you listen to, the friends you hang out yeah. with. You need to start cutting some of the fat, and you need to start replacing it with positive stuff. Because yeah. everything is an environment. And if you can start creating the right environments that force you, because the environment forces you. If you slept and lived in a gym for 24 hours straight for seven days, you're gonna pick up a weight. Yeah, yeah. of course. Because <laughs> yeah. the environment is gonna force you. Everyone's gonna be with weights, you're gonna be sleeping on the ground, you're gonna, what the fuck is this guy doing? You're gonna be like, I'm gonna look weird if I don't start lifting weights. Yeah. So you're gonna start lifting weights. You yeah. hang out at a bar, you're gonna grab a drink. Yeah. You go to the beach, you're gonna get wet. You're gonna get sand on your feet. Mm -hmm. So the environment dictates that. You hang out at the library, you're gonna read. Yeah. You go to a business event, you're gonna meet some cool people and right. talk business. And so you need to force yourself into new environments. My, there's a problem with that sometimes though. This environment of my house is so comfortable and nice <laughs> that sometimes I never wanna leave. Yeah. And so I have to force myself to go out and to network and to talk yeah. and to meet people and to still remind myself of those habits. So, it's a never ending. Yeah, that's kind of like that cost book uh, you were talking about that John was talking exactly, about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Switch cost. That's good, man. Um, so, <clears throat> something I wanted to ask too is just what brings out like your dark side, like your shadow in the entrepreneurial game, right? Because I think everybody has that that dark side yeah. that comes out, man. And I think a lot of people are scared of it and they shouldn't, they shouldn't embrace it. So, think about Michael Jordan. He brought out his dark side, which is his controlled rage, yep. controlled aggression for 48 minutes, right? And he performed at an elite level. So, what brings you, your dark side out like in the entrepreneur game? That's a powerful, deep question. I would say it's a combination between, and I know this, I've done my inner work, and I've come to peace with this, because I think it's a, it's a, a common factor in a lot of people. Lewis Howes, a lot of, it, a lot of successful people I've, uh, I've interviewed and hung out with and friends with, have all said that they've got a similar quality to this. Michael Jordan, same thing, is on one side of me, it's, proving everyone else wrong. As a kid, I was failing in school. My teachers thought I was stupid. Um, I was failing in school and my friends were like, I don't wanna be partners with you on a school project. I don't wanna sit next to you in class. And of course me, I'm always like, I'm trying to sit next to my friends, have fun, make jokes, and then the teacher kicks me out for laughing and having a good time, like I was that kid. So it's like the teachers thought I was stupid, my friends wanted to be friends with me, but not in school because I was dumb, right? I'd get them in trouble. And so a lot of it was like, oh yeah? Oh yeah? Mm. Watch, I'm gonna fucking own the school, I'm gonna write your checks, I'm gonna dictate your life in the future because I'll be the boss. And it was like that chip on my shoulder where it's like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. watch. I'm gonna fucking buy your house and evict you. You know what I mean? Like, I'm gonna be the landlord where you live in an apartment. You know what I mean? Like, I'm that guy. I'm gonna fucking fly a helicopter to my high school reunion. Like, you know what I mean? And I'm not saying that that's a good mindset to have, but I can feel it in me now. Right. It's like, oh yeah? Like, watch. I'll methodically sit in the fucking closet for six years mapping out the plan so that I get that. And I did. And I'm a multimillionaire in my 20s now. And it's like, oh yeah? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Watch me in my 30s. Yeah. <laughs> Watch me in my 40s. And I think that's the competitive edge I have. Oh yeah? I'll fucking sit in the room for 10 years studying, learning, mapping out the plan figuring out why it would work or wouldn't work, testing it, figuring, tinkering with it until I fucking get it. 
And that's, I think, the difference between me and a lot of people is I'm willing to do whatever it takes to win. And that kind of like mentality of like, oh yeah, I'll prove to you, you know what I mean? And uh, it was less of a verbal thing like that I ever said to people, unless they got me going and then I would, Um, but it was more of like an internal thing. Like, okay, that's fine, you'll see. And now people are starting to see. Um, And I'm not saying that that's good or bad, I'm just saying I know that that, that's a part of me, because you said, what's that part of your rage? And I'm like, I've got it. and yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm from a spiritual side, right? I have my, I have all these different sides. We all have different sides of us. From a spiritual side, I'm like, that's not good to have. Um, but from a winner, competitive side, business side, I'm like, let's go. Yeah, yeah. That's the competitive side of me. You guys know I was one of the top professional paintball yeah, athletes yeah, in the yeah, world. Yeah. Made over $300,000 playing professional paintball in mm-hmm. high school and college, traveling around the world. And I had that side of me as well, right? Coming up in sports it was just kind of like oh yeah just watch and uh inevitably i worked my way up and in about four or five years i was the best in the world and i was winning three hundred thousand dollars in cash prizes playing professional paintball and so it's like i did it in business i did it in sports and i think a lot of people ironically have that i've interviewed i've done over 1600 interviews and i ask a question like that in my own way and uh, a lot of people that are really successful have that kind of like, oh yeah, mentality, yeah. just watch me. Um, like Will Smith, right? He goes, I've already won, you just now have to see it manifest in, <laughs> in your reality. But in my reality, in my head, I already beat you. Like now you have to see it happen, so I'm gonna prove it to you. Yeah. But I already beat you in my head. Do you want me to show you in reality, in your reality? Because I already beat you. Okay, let's do this. And then he beats you and he goes, see? I already beat you. And that's my mentality. I just see the result that I want, and if somebody's gonna compete with me, then I go, okay. And it's like, and so I think a lot of successful people have that. I'm not saying it's the most conducive to a happy, fulfilling life, but I think it's a good way to win. It's the warrior spirit inside of me, and like if I had to go to war, that would be the part of me that I'd tap into. I wouldn't part, tap into the part of me that would be like, you know, Allah, like, <laughs> I wouldn't happen to that guy. I would, I would do that in a different scenario. But if I had to go to war, I'd be like, I'm turning that mentality on. Um, so yeah, I mean, that would be the part yeah. of me that, and there's all different parts of me. Yeah. That's the part of me though, that I feel like fits the answer to yeah. your question. Thanks man. Thanks for being yeah. transparent. Yeah. All like that. So I mean, with that competitive edge, I mean, I think we all sometimes do resist something in life. So is there something that you're currently resisting right now in your, in life? Resisting. I've been really good lately of having a high level of awareness and consciousness around being in flow, and flow is the opposite of resistance. Right. And like if I'm resisting the river, the river is hurting me. If I let go of the tree branch and stop resisting the force of the river and the waterfall, and I let go, now I'm in flow, and now it, now it feels good. Now I'm just going down. People, they make water parks like this where mm-hmm. you go with the flow, <laughs> and it's fun. And so, you know, I'm in flow right now. I don't know what areas I'm resisting. I'm sure if I spend some deep time meditating, I might find some part of me. Um, It's a deep question, and I'm in such flow right now, which is why everything feels so good in life, because when you are in flow and you don't have inner conflicts, meaning you're not saying one thing but doing another, or saying one thing but feeling another, that's an inner conflict. Um, I don't have any inner conflicts right now. I'm in flow. I don't have any resistance where I'm like fighting something or resisting something. I feel really in flow. I think at a deep, deep, deep level maybe there's resistance in all of us no matter what level right. we're at. Absolutely. Um, but I'd have to probably do some deep meditation on it. Gotcha. The fact that I can't find it and it's not coming up is a good thing because you know I would just bring it up. Right. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything. At least gotcha. consciously right now, subconsciously because your brain has a million mm-hmm. subconscious thoughts for every one conscious thought. I can't consciously pull anything up though okay. yeah. which is a good thing yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. sometimes I would be like oh <laughs> I got one but right now I'm like I'm yeah. Yeah. yeah that's a good thing and before yeah. I ask the final question man um, I just want to uh, ask what, what are th- three books that you recommend and like maybe on the on the brain side of things so I think that's powerful you're talking about and then what's one skill you really advocate for a listener to really acquire so I'm gonna start with the skill mm-hmm. there's so many skills but there's so many skills, 
but I would say it's finding the perfect balance between focus, controlled focus, which goes hand in hand with high levels of awareness. So how do you have high levels of awareness, macro scale, like I'm aware of it all. I'm aware of the feelings I'm having. I'm aware of why you said that and that made me feel a certain way and it triggered me. I'm aware of this. I'm aware that the thoughts coming in are just clouds passing in the sky. They're not actually a part of me. They're, <laughs> they're a part of my reality, but they're not a part of me. I am not my emotions. I am not the words you said to me that triggered an old story and feeling and blah, blah, blah. I'm aware of it all. And then at micro level, I can just focus in on your freaking shoe and like analyze the cloth material. <laughs> and like, I can just stop doing everything and just focus on getting this project done, focus on copywriting the sales page, focus on finishing this book, block everything out, focus on this conversation. And so, you know, and, and Warren Buffett and Bill Gates were both pulled into separate rooms in an interview and one of the questions asked was, what is the number one skill you've developed and that other people could also develop that made you a billionaire? Both of them answered the question with focus. Okay. And a lot of other successful entrepreneurs I've met, they say focus is one of the best skills they've learned to develop. Because in life, there's so many shiny objects, right. there's so many people, there's so many things pulling us in different directions. Mm -hmm. Our ability to focus and get stuff done is one of the most important skills. But with that, I think having a high level of awareness because you could be so focused on the wrong thing, right? right? Mm -hmm. And focused on the right thing. But having a level of awareness to discern what's right and what's wrong, even though right and wrong is a whole conversation itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, but having the ability to have awareness and perspective around everything going on, everyone's emotions, everyone's physiology and what that means and having awareness behind everything I can't even get into this because I don't want to go too high level for people, not in a way that they wouldn't understand, but at a depth that they couldn't digest. Yeah. And so I think it's focus and awareness. If you can, and then the question becomes, so I don't leave people like a lot of people do in these interviews with no action step. Oh, great, that was awesome, but now what? <laughs> I'll hate when people do that, right? You're like, most people would be like, damn, that was good. And then they're like, <laughs> like, a, like right when the call's over or this interview's over, what do I do with that? <laughs> and I always hated that. So now that, I I, like that. now that I'm blessed to be in a position where hopefully some people find my advice valuable, I'll, I'll do what most people don't do and I'll actually add an action step. Um, the awareness comes from reading books. Mm -hmm. The awareness comes from s practicing, practicing you taking time throughout the day to stop reacting to stuff and be proactive. Meaning reacting, oh, someone texted me, got to text him back. Mm. Oh, got to check social media because that like little tick in my body is like, check my phone, where'd my phone go? I got to mm -hmm. check social media. Did somebody call me back? Did somebody mm -hmm. message me? I got to check my emails. I got nothing going on for five minutes. Let me check social media. You're just reacting. You're reacting, you're reacting. Proactive is, fuck all that. I'm going to focus and get this task done yep. because this gets me closer to my goal. That's it's, proactive. Yep. And so how do you increase your awareness and practice focus? You just read lots of books to learn about everything. Get a well-rounded scope of how to communicate. Look up, and this goes into the next questions for books, look up Tony Robbins, look up Deepak Chopra, and those guys will lead you to other people. You need motivation, look up Eric Thomas. You want really deep business strategy, look up Jay Abraham. You want some old school basics, that are always relevant in life, look up Jim Rohn, look up Brian Tracy, look up Think and Grow Rich, look up Rich Dad Poor Dad, look up um, Think and Grow Rich with uh, Napoleon Hill. Yeah. Like, there's so much good stuff out there. Um, those are just great people to learn from. So yeah, if you want to get better awareness, it happens through practice. You have to read lots of books to be able to have. You can't just suddenly be aware. You could through breath. Breath is a good one. If you ever like, man, life feels stressed right now. Practice breathing. Deep breath okay. from your stomach and feel it, right? Not from your chest. Chest is anxiety. When you're like, when you're scared or when you're tired from the, the gym, you're usually breathing from your chest. You're anxious, you're tired, you're stressed. Mm -hmm. It's from the chest. When you're calm and you're controlling your breath, it's from the stomach. Okay. Your and so your, your diaphragm, mm -hmm. you can feel your stomach breathing versus your chest breathing. Mm -hmm. Practice it, put your hand on your stomach, your other hand on your chest, and breathe from your stomach. It should expand out, it should contract in. Breathe from the stomach, close your eyes if you want, 
and take deep, slow breaths, however long that is for you, at a comfortable pace is the most important part. Who gives a shit about what the seconds are that somebody recommends? Mm-hmm. Do it at a comfortable pace. Mm-hmm. Breathe in, breathe out. Just do that a couple times throughout the day. Bring yourself back to the present moment. That's why they call it the present, because if you live in it, it's a gift. Most people, as cliche as that sounds, most people are living in the past, mm-hmm. and they're bringing that shit into the present, right. and it ruins it. And so most people are maybe living in the future, and they're actually in the present. And it's like, I can sit with people, and I can see them thinking about the future, worrying about the past, and they're not in the present. And the present is a gift if you learn to live in it. And the best way I found through spiritual studies and practice to bring myself right back to the moment, Hmm. stomach breath, deep, relaxed stomach breath. Couple of those brings you right back and allows you to have the awareness of why you're feeling a certain way, allows you to be more proactive instead of reactive, and allows you to control your focus first through bringing yourself back to the present through the breath. And so little little tips and tricks like that. And yeah. then I can answer the books, obviously. Yeah. Unless you, know, if you want to add on. No, 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 go ahead. <laughs> answer the books. You're on a roll. Um, so the books that I would recommend, and you said more on a mindset level, yeah. there's so many books. Um, John Asaroff's book, Inner Size just okay, came size. out. It's okay. on the most up-to-date, relevant, positive psychology nice. and affirmations, things that you could say, things that you can do to start feeling happier, having more awareness, being more focused, and start living a more proactive life to achieve the goals and the dream life that you really want. It's all about the brain. That's why there's exercise for the body, the outer body, it's good for your inner body as well, and then exercise for the brain, for the mind. And so. You know, John's always saying we exercise our bodies to get stronger, but we don't exercise our brains to get stronger. Yeah. And he's all about doing that. He's the leading authority in the space. Exercise, great book. Got get it. it on Amazon. Next one, Tony Robbins. And I have no benefit for people who are getting these books. I could <laughs> raffle off a ton. The books changed my life. You don't have to get the books, but they're like ten dollars. I recommend you do. Um, and if you like to listen to books, listen to books. Yeah, yeah, That's the best books. part too. Audible, right? There's so many different things. Spotify. Um, so many different ways you can listen. Because people go, I don't have time to read. First of all, we already talked about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, second of all, listen to them while you drive. You drive to work and back to work, right? To and from home to work. That's usually for most people an hour a day. It's just driving. Yeah. Listen while you're taking a shower, while you're getting ready in the morning, while you're making your food, while you're eating it. Stop checking social media. Stop watching TV. Stop listening to the negative news in the media. Yeah. Listen to books. It will change your life. Turn your turn your your daily habits when it's normally quiet like showering, getting ready in the morning, doing your hair, doing your makeup if you're a girl, putting on your clothes, picking out your clothes, making food, eating that food, getting ready and leaving in the morning. That's 20, 30, 40 minutes for the average person. Exactly. All time to be listening. Put in your earbuds, listen to some positive shit. Get in the car, drive to work, drive back. There's time. Why are you eating lunch? You don't need to chat about what happened on the Netflix show you're watching with the fucking person at work. Listen to the show. There's an hour break. I just got you two hours a day to start listening to books if you don't want to read. I like to listen, but I also like to read. They're both powerful. They do different parts for the brain, listening versus reading, so they're both a good balance. Um, Tony Robbins. Listen to all his shit. I won't even name a book. I'll name one because it's powerful, actually, but listen to all his stuff. He changed my life. And my recommendation is, is if you don't like the first thing, the first flavor of Tony Robbins ice cream, metaphorically, try another flavor. Tony Robbins is like Baskin Robbins <laughs> up in this bitch. He's got like 101 flavors, right? So go and try all Tony Robbins. If you don't like his finance stuff, you might like his relationship stuff, mm-hmm. you might like his spiritual stuff, you might like his goal setting stuff, personal development stuff, marketing stuff. Tony's a beast. Yeah. Been doing this for like 38, 40 years. He's one of the best in the whole world, if not the best. Study all his stuff. Go watch all his YouTube videos. I've watched all of them 25 times. I have all his courses. I've been in his events. I've read all his books. Um, he changed my life. Yeah. So if anybody's like, who the fuck's this Mark guy? I am the byproduct and the ever unfolding creation of many mentors, Tony Robbins of which has made a huge difference in my life. Um, study all his stuff. His one of his best books is Awaken the Giant Man. Yeah. Now I'm not I'm not playing around here. That's like some Harry Potter shit. That's like a 700 page book. Yeah. That's like a huge one, right? Um, so it's it's a undertaking. Uh, but like the old saying goes, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Yeah. Just read one page a day, one chapter a day, um, or get the audio book because he has the audio. Um, and then last but not least. Uh, there's so many good books. I'm trying to remember the name of this one from a spiritual side. Um, actually, no, I'll give them this one because it's coming to my mind faster. Spiral Dynamics by Claire Graves. Okay. Uh, that one's nuts. It's probably going to be too much for most people to handle. Not in a, you're not there level. More like 
it's hard for me to read yeah. in the sense that the vocabulary they use in the book, I'm telling you, man, most people are using like simple vocabulary that I'm using because when I communicate, especially via interview with lots of people listening, they always say it's always better to keep your uh, language at a level that like a second grader can right, understand. Right. Um, it's easier for the brain. Like you ever studied something or watched something or listened to something that was so advanced that your brain hurt. Like you're like, <laughs> oh my God, wow, this level seven statistics mm -hmm. class is blowing my mind. It hurts. Because your brain is focused on something it doesn't understand. Right. And it has to work harder to fire the neural pathways to find a way to understand and retain and comprehend what it's learning. Where when I'm saying this stuff, your brain doesn't have to remember it, retain it, comprehend it, understand it, analyze it intellectually, conceptually. You just get it. Mm -hmm. And that's the power of these interviews, which is why I love what you guys are doing here. Because it's easy stuff. People can understand. They'll make Absolutely. a difference in their life. Spiral Dynamics is not that. Awesome. But what Spiral Dynamics is is something that will take your level of consciousness and understand different levels. And you'll be like, oh, I know why they're acting that way, thinking that way, saying those things, behaving this way, have achieved those results. You'll literally have such a high level of awareness. We're talking about awareness. Mm -hmm. Around like everything and everyone. Why the biggest thought leaders in the world became the way they were. Why um, Hitler was able to have the power that he did back in the day, why so-and-so achieved this, why Martin Luther King created a movement, why so-and-so uh, <coughs> and so. It's nuts. The way they break it down, why a homeless man is homeless. They go through all of it and you're like, oh my God, it has to do with their level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And then from there, their ability to influence and communicate and this and this and this and this. And the languaging and the the way they paint the picture for you and the examples and the people and the facts and the science and the research behind this book, boom, it's making me want to go back and read it. Yeah. Um, so spiral dynamics. Uh -huh. That's a big one. For most people though, I would just go study Tony. For anybody who wants the challenge, study spiral dynamics. Okay. But for most people, just stick to Tony Robbins, Deepak Chopra, John Astroff, Napoleon Hill with Think yeah. and Grow Rich, stuff like that. Start with the basics because I think the best people in the world are the ones who've mastered the basics. Awesome. So. Study the basics, get back down to it. Don't think you're too good to learn about how to set and achieve goals. Don't think you're too good to learn personal development, how to get motivated. Mm -hmm. Don't think you're too good to say positive things to yourself in the mirror. Um, little things like that, they really make a difference. Yeah. And so, yeah, man, that's just fun. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> Dude, so um, that's pretty much a wrap on this, I end on that. Um, so wh what can we support you with right now? Like some of the listeners, I know you got your conference going yeah. on. So how can we find more information like that to support you? So I would say two things. One is anybody who likes this, and we went in all different directions, which I enjoy. You can tell my background is not just in making money on the internet, mm -hmm. um, but I've done a lot of personal work. Right, I've done a lot of personal development, spiritual development, because that's what matters most. Um, I could just be some guy, I could be on here teaching you stuff about how to make money <laughs> on the internet, and that's fun. And I've got so much stuff on that people can study, because that's how I've branded myself. Um, but yeah, the personal development side of it's really powerful. So if anybody watching this, if you do want to know more about what we talked about in the beginning, how do I make money on the internet? How do I build a personal mm -hmm. brand? How do I use my cell phone and my laptop to make $100,000 a year or $100,000 a month? go watch our free training. We have free training on this. Why is it free? Because I believe that if I could show you so much value for free, upfront, then you're gonna inquire what else I have yeah. that you can invest in. And so like this interview, if this interview was free and people loved it, they might be like, I'm gonna go follow him on social media, I'm gonna go watch more of his stuff, I wanna buy his book, I wanna do this. And so that's the way it works, it's law of reciprocity. Yeah. If I do something good for you, you're, it's going to come back for me. If we walk through a hotel and the first door I open for you, the next one you open for me. <laughs> Law, try it. Yeah. Try it. Right. Law yeah. of reciprocity. If I open the first door, you're going to open the next door. You're, it's Law of reciprocity. So the reason the training is so valuable and free is just that. I know that if I can show you in a very powerful 90 minute to two hour long free training so much value then you're going to want to know, some people are going to want to know how I can actually help them. And then we have courses and workshops and seminars and stuff like that, which leads me, leads me to the second thing. For people who want the free course, uh, the free masterclass training, you guys can plug that link mm -hmm. in and go watch that. It's free. All you have to do is put your email in so we can send it to you. Um, but for people who want to come and they're already inspired by this, we've got our GPM summit uh, coming up, Global Prosperity Movement. There's a movement happening, guys, and it's about how to live a prosperous life 
how to make a difference in the world, and just be your best self and inspire others in the process. And so we're calling it the Global Prosperity Movement. It's an incredible summit. We've got so many rock star entrepreneurs coming out. Everybody's in their 20s and 30s and is a millionaire. Not that that number matters, but most people listening to this probably wouldn't mind being a millionaire. <laughs> and so uh, what that means is, is that you're going to learn a lot of stuff about how to make money and then how to make it matter. How can I use my laptop and my cell phone to go out and make six figures, which is 100 grand or more, or a million dollars or more? Um, and I know those numbers might sound like, oh, yeah, oh, sure. But I sit here today being that guy five, six, seven years ago before I started my business, oh yeah, sure. And here I am like, I'm gonna do a million dollars this month. Yeah. My I'm, mind's blown. I'm blown. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, it's just crazy. And so I feel like for people listening right now, if you are ready for a big paradigm shift, meaning you're ready to radically shatter what you thought was possible for yourself and for your life, and you're ready to become the first generation millionaire in your family, then man up and come to the GPM Summit. Uh, you guys can plug that link in as well. The, the tickets are only 497 bucks, and I say only because not $497 is not a lot of money. Money is relative. To a billionaire, a million dollars is not a lot of money. It's always relative. So I don't say $497 is not a lot and that's all that it costs to attend. I say it's not a lot because it's an investment in yourself. Right. It's not a pair of Jimmy <clears throat> Choo's or Red Bottoms. It's not a to me backpack it's not an expensive dinner uh it's not a shitty flight on southwest airlines or something <laughs> you know what i mean um we're talking an investment in your education yeah. we're talking an investment in yourself and we're talking an opportunity for you to learn from and connect with not oh i'm never going to see that person come up and fucking shake my hand like exactly. actual connection <laughs> actual human connection and sit down and talk with us these are my friends. Like you're gonna get so much value. They're all down to earth. They're mm -hmm. all chill. They're all amazing human beings who don't just want to make money. They're coming here for free to speak to everybody. The, I call it the homie hookup. <laughs> I'm lucky that I'm friends with so many badass people because I too have shown them that I'm becoming right. a badass. So they want me to be friends with them because I want them to be friends with me. Yeah. You just if I see that you're stunting and you're doing amazing things in the world our vibrations on the same page, we're gonna be friends, we're gonna be attracted. Likeness attracts likeness. And so, for people who wanna be in this type of a circle, who wanna be in this type of a room with people that can change your life, then this is something that they're gonna to wanna to check out. The free masterclass is amazing. And after watching that, if they wanna join any of our courses or events or something, mm -hmm. they can. Um, but I honestly know this event's gonna change lives, and for anybody who's listening to this, they need to get there. And I know you guys are in the LA area, yeah, absolutely, right? Absolutely. So hopefully some people seeing this are in LA. Yep. If you're not, get your ass on an airport. <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of people, probably more than half of the people coming are actually flying from out of the country. That's amazing. Out of the country. Yeah. They're gonna have to go through customs, bust out the passport. Mm -hmm. They're not driving from San Francisco <clears throat> down to LA, which right. would be a burden. They're flying out of the country. Yeah. That's flights, that's hotels, that's customs, that's all the international everything. airport, that's everything. So there's really no excuse, um, but I'd love to connect with you. And my favorite thing to do nowadays is, because I know I'm doing, I'm still doing a lot of interviews and just so much content on social media. I just tell people, look, if this interview that you're listening to now inspired you to join our free course, join our any of our programs, attend the GPM Summit or anything, or if you meet me at another thing, just come up and tell me that this interview helped inspire them because that's why I do these yeah. and I know that's why you guys do this yeah, because the feeling that you get when someone comes up and they're like dude your guys show is changing lives and then they tell you their story of how the show has mm -hmm. impacted them that's what you start to live for and back to my point of when you find something that's good for others and you enjoy doing it that's where the most fulfillment comes from you that's love something. what you do and it makes a difference in the world and then because you're in such high vibrational frequency, you're doing what you love and it's good for the world, you end up making money. And so this is what we're gonna be diving into. You're gonna hear from a dozen of us at the event, but uh, yeah, man, this has yeah. been this was awesome. Been fun. I knew awesome. it would be amazing. I knew yep. it was gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, oh, go ahead. So we'll have that all linked up in the show notes. Um, cool. Guys, uh, go f listen to Mark, um, his masterclass, the tennis conference, follow him on social media. All He's a straight-up badass. We have a ton of respect for you. Mark, thank you so much for thank spending time with us, man. Really appreciate yeah, it. This is awesome. Thanks again, Mark. Appreciate, appreciate it. Thanks for coming by. All right, guys. Until next time.
Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this podcast video. If you guys are interested in watching and listening to more of our podcasts, make sure to click the link in the description box below. We have a ton of awesome podcasts. I mean, we're up to like 130 right now. We're giving one out every single week and we're actually bringing on some of the big guests um, out there and everything is really centered around lifestyle habits, systems, overcoming adversity, how someone got from point A to point B and some of the rituals um, and lessons learned throughout that entire journey. So you guys will gain a lot of value from these podcasts, whether it's, whether it's through audio or here on, on YouTube, okay? So make sure to check out the link in the description box and we'll see you guys in the next episode.